Hello YouTube, I'm Dramaticus, and this is the 10th episode of my show, Thor's Day. And today on the show, I'm going to be taking a look at an ancient Mesopotamian deity by the name of Shamash. So, sit back, relax, and let me regale you with tales of this ancient dude. Where there were a few different civilizations living within ancient Mesopotamia at that time, namely the Akkadians, the Sumerians, and the Babylonians, Depending on which one you look at, Shamash may also be known as Utu. So, for the sake of this video, obviously, we're going to be calling him Shamash. Um, now, the translation of his name literally meant sun. And uh, you'll come to find that that's fairly significant, um, as I discuss him throughout this video. Much in the same way that the Egyptians actually... Uh, represented sometimes their deities by animals. In this case, Shamash at some times was represented by a lion. Um, now, the lion, you may wonder why, why exactly would we go for that. Now, I'm not entirely certain of the exact reason, but I do know that the lion is um, oft used in iconography as a regal representation. Now, given that Shamash in his human form is oft represented by a man sitting in a throne uh, holding up a rod and ring, um, which are symbols of uh, justice and law and whatnot. Um, one can assume that the lion being regal and him sitting on a throne are related in some way, shape, or form. So oftentimes Shamash is represented um, as sitting in his throne with the rod and ring, uh, sometimes a headdress on of some kind. But yes, he's, he's oftentimes very much uh, the regal figure. Um, whether or not his features were, you know, hard, soft, uh, whether he was younger or older, not really 100% certain. I wasn't really able to find very much on the physical description of him, but we can assume he was likely uh, a middle-aged man, quite possibly, um, with sterner looking features. I don't know for sure, but that would be my guess. Um, but yes, as far as how he is depicted, that's usually uh, what he is uh, shown as, is on his throne, rod and ring, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much how he is usually represented. So as mentioned previously in the name section of the video, um, I told you that Shamash is an ancient Mesopotamian deity, and as such he was worshipped in the three cultures uh, therein, so the Babylonian, the Sumerian, and the Akkadian. Now, he wasn't tied to any one particular place, uh, just ancient Mesopotamia in general. Uh, so, his worshippers were found throughout there, and uh, yeah, he didn't really have any particular ties to any one location from what I was able to find. Again, seeming to either draw from or inspire Egyptian mythos, the Mesopotamian deity Shamash um, has a sun disk as his symbol, his primary symbol. Um, now, the sun disk in this case is actually shown in two different ways. One, where it is the simple sun disk but having a four-pointed star within it. And the other being a winged sun disk, um, sometimes with a uh, possibly male, not sure, figure in the center of the disk. Uh, so these two modified forms of the sun disk are representative of the god Shamash. As one can guess from his name, Shamash's main domain is the sun. Uh, now, along with the sun, he also has the domains of law and justice, and one that may not be entirely clear at first, and that is salvation. Uh, now, in this case, salvation is basically kind of a release from torment and suffering at the hands of disease. Uh, now, what people would do if they were in any sort of uh, major illness situation, what they would appeal to Shamash to rid them of the demons that are plaguing them. Uh, so, this could mean either they would die and as such be released uh, spiritually, or they may even get better. Um, either which way, Shamash did his job. So, those were his domains. Uh, now, the salvation part actually came from him being a sun god 
uh, he would shed light upon the land, and so he would actually rid places of darkness. So, in this salvation domain, ridding a person of darkness is ridding them of their demons or illness. So yeah, uh, those were his domains. Where Shamash was the sun god, as well as a god of justice, law, salvation, he's a pretty big player in the ancient Mesopotamian pantheon. Uh, now, he did actually have two major centers of worship where a lot of people worship, where he had temples, etc. Um, and those were at Larsa and Sippar. And uh, at those two locations, those, like I said, those were the biggest spots where he was worshipped. Of course, he was worshipped all throughout, but those two in particular. Now, the biggest example, though, of worship or respect for uh, for Shamash actually came from Hammurabi. Now, if the name rings a bell, it's because Hammurabi had created one of the first codes of law. Uh, actually, I do believe it was the code of law, the very first code of law, and he attributed it to none other than Shamash. Um, he actually was, uh, I don't know if you could really say quoted exactly, but it was said that he had uh, said that he was inspired by or given outright the code of law by Shamash himself. So that's some pretty big stuff right there. I mean, if that's not a form of worship, uh, you know, to use this code of law as inspired divinely, I don't know what is. So uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much uh, it that I could find for any sort of worship of Shamash. So there are a couple of interesting aspects of the mythology surrounding Shamash. Uh, one such point is that where he was a sun god, there were actually other sun gods throughout the Mesopotamian mythology, uh, throughout various uh, years, centuries, etc. Um, Shamash actually existed for a couple of millennia, surprisingly enough. Um, but yes, what had happened is that throughout time, these other sun gods sort of got melded and overtaken by Shamash until he was it's basically sort of a Highlander situation, you know? There can be only one. Um, now, with that said, he was basically the supreme sun god, um, whereas the other sun gods either took lower positions or were just outright gone. Um, so yes, that was one interesting point I found about him, is that he was sort of climbed his way to the top. Another point, um, now in the actual mythology of Gilgamesh, uh, which is a Babylonian Mesopotamian hero, uh, demigod sort of deal, um, Shamash actually aided Gilgamesh in the defeat of Humbaba uh, by sending him dreams. And when he would send these dreams, uh, Gilgamesh's companion uh, Enkidu would translate those dreams and they would basically be forms of instruction or help in some form to aid Gilgamesh in his eventual fight against Humbaba and led him to uh, Humbaba's defeat. So that was that was kind of cool. It's a different way of doing it. I think, uh, you know, definitely different from Greek, where normally Greek gods would intervene directly according to Homer and others. Uh, they would just be like, boom, hey, I'm here. In this case, Shamash was a little more subtle with it, sending him dreams and, you know, getting them translated, etc. So that was kind of cool. Um, now, as far as familial relations go, because usually deities will have you know, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, you know, just like morals. Um, when it comes down to his familial relations, uh, Shamash was the son of the moon god, Sin, and was also the father of uh, Ishtar, and the husband of Aya, or, yeah, they call them consorts, but they're basically husband and wife. Uh, now, Aya and Ishtar eventually melded into one because Aya was usually never mentioned outside of mentioning Shamash. So eventually they merged Ishtar and Aya into one, and it just was Ishtar after that. And those three sort of became a mythological power triad sort of deal, um, if you will. So they were, they were basically top dog, those three. So yes, that's, that's pretty much the mythology uh, that I was able to find on Shamash. Well, folks, I do hope that you enjoyed this look at the 
ancient Mesopotamian deity Shamash. Um, I know I had some fun researching him, finding out what made him tick and whatnot. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching. I do hope again uh, that you stay tuned for my other video tomorrow on Wordwise, and uh, that you keep on watching them videos, and uh, you know, do that thing. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I'm Dramaticus. I'm out. Have a great one.